Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and aloha. To preserve the dignity of this ceremony, we ask that everyone turn off all cellular phones and other wireless devices. It is a beautiful morning on board the historic USS Missouri here on Ford Island, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. I am Ayaswan Kahealani Wilcox, and it is my honor to be your Master of Ceremonies today. On behalf of the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John C. Aquilino, and Commander, Special Operations Command, General Richard D. Clark, welcome to the Change of Command Ceremony for the United States Special Operations Command, Pacific. In this ceremony, Major General Joshua M. Rudd, United States Army, will relinquish command to Rear Admiral Jeremy B. Williams, United States Navy. We would like to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guests in attendance at today's ceremony, Mrs. Ainsley Rudd, spouse of the outgoing commander, U.S. Special Operations Command Pacific, and Mrs. Stephanie Williams, spouse of the incoming commander, U.S. Special Operations Command Pacific, and their two daughters. Special Operations Command Pacific would also like to welcome all general and flag officers, consul generals, community civic leaders, military leaders, friends, and family who are here with us today to witness this momentous occasion. Thank you all so much for attending. <laughs> Providing our music this morning is the Marine Corps Forces Pacific Band, playing under the direction of S Staff Sergeant Sawyer. Please join me in recognizing them for their outstanding pre-ceremony -con pre concert. In just a moment, the commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John Aquilino, the commander, United States Special Operations Command, General Richard Clark, the commander, United States Special Operations Command Pacific, Major General Josh Rudd, Rear Admiral Jeremy Williams, incoming commander, United States Special Operations Command Pacific, will arrive. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and the rendering of honors. In accordance with naval traditions, we will be piping aboard the official party. It is customary to hand salute from the first note of the bosun's pipe through the ruffles and flourishes music by the band. Today's sideboy detail is comprised of members from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard, who represent more than 370,000 service members located throughout the Indo-Pacific Command area of responsibility. Rear Admiral, United States Navy, arriving. Special Operations Command, Pacific, arriving.
Special Operations Command arriving. Indo-Pacific Command, arriving. Please remain standing for the parading of the national colors, the national anthem, the Hawaii State Song, and the invocation. Parade the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem followed by the Hawaii State Song.
Bosun, retire the side boys. Chaplain Rustin Hill will now offer the invocation. Thank you, Chaplain Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and remain seated throughout the remainder of the ceremony. The 25th Infantry Division Ha'a was written and gifted to the division in 2014 by Kyle Nakanelua and Thomas Koulu Kukui Jr. It was first performed publicly for the division change of command between Major Generals William K. Fullard and Charles A. Flynn. The Ha'a is a Hawaiian tradition which portrays the skill and discipline of the warrior. Similar to military drill, the Ha'a celebrates the spirit of Hawaiian koa, or the warrior, and embodies the virtues of aloha, courage, unity, loyalty, and mana, or power and authority. The 25th Infantry Division Ha'a speaks to the legacy of the division and our connection to the people of this land, their ancestors and warrior spirit. Its translation can be seen in your programs. Ladies and gentlemen, the 25th ID Hui Ha'a.
My what? Moko, moko. Ringa, ringa, pakia. Why, why? Takai a kaki no neho aki. Oh, kake a neho aki. Oh, kamate, kamate ka ora. Oh, kamate, kamate ka ora. Oh, tenge te tangata. Uru, uru na. Neki ki maipa ka wite te a. A upare, a upare, a upare, upare, piti te a. Hairunga hairano. Hi ha hi ha. Aha koi amai. Hi te waka. Te urunga. Te waka. Te moenga. Te waka. Hi te te tokoronga. Hi tokoronga. Hi te waka. Hi ha hi ha. Aha koi amai. Hi te waka. Hi te urunga. Te waka. Hi te moenga. Te waka. Hi te te Thank you, 25th ID, Hui Ha'a team. At this time, the service member of the quarter, Sergeant Sean Hill, will distribute lays to Major General Rudd and Rear Admiral Williams. These lays will be presented to the family members on behalf of SOCPAC, Mrs. Ainsley Rudd, spouse of the outgoing commander, U.S. Special Operations Command Pacific, and Mrs. Stephanie Williams, spouse of the incoming commander, U.S. Special Operations Command Pacific, and their two daughters. SOCPAC was activated on November 1, 1983, but its roots date back to the Vietnam era. SOCPAC provides the commander, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, with a joint special operations force that lives and works in the Indo-Pacific region, supporting security and stability in the U.S. Indo-PACOM area of responsibility, including 36 countries encompassing half of the Earth's surface. SOCPAC is a subunified command of United States Special Operations Command under the operational control of U.S. Indo-PACOM, working side by side with United States Army Pacific Command, Pacific Air Forces, Pacific Fleet, and Marine Corps Forces Pacific. SOCPAC is one of seven theater special operations commands around the globe. SOCPAC has operational control of the 353rd Special Operations Wing out of Kadena Air Force Base, located in Okinawa, Japan, 1st Battalion, 1st Special Forces Group, located in Tori Station, Okinawa, Japan, and Naval Special Warfare Task Unit 1, located in Guam. The change of command ceremony is a time-honored military tradition that marks the transfer of responsibility and authority from a current commander to his successor. From antiquity, military units designed representative banners, 
which today are known as unit flags, colors, or guidons. These banners were carried into battle by military units as markers of the unit commander's location, its direction of movement or attack, or as a symbol of victory waved at the conclusion of battle. In time, this important symbol became a prominent part of military ceremonies, and in ceremonies marking changes of command, is used to communicate to all that the leadership of a military unit is transferring from the hands of the outgoing commander to the officer selected to take his place. This symbolic tradition has endured throughout modern military history and will be continued here today. Key to the change of command is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the heritage and history of the unit, but also the unity and loyalty of its service members. The colors The colors are the commander's symbol of representing his responsibilities to the organization wherever the commander is. We will now begin the change of command ceremony with the passing of the colors of Special Operations Command Pacific, Walter Zakowski will pass to Major General Rudd for the last time. As the senior enlisted soldier and principal advisor to the commander, the custodian of the colors is the command senior enlisted leader. Major General Rudd passes the colors to Admiral Aquilino, relinquishing his responsibilities and authority associated with command. Admiral Aquilino passes the colors to Rear Admiral Williams, charging the new commander with the responsibility and authority of command. Effective 19 July 2022, Rear Admiral Williams will assume all duties and responsibilities as the commander, U.S. Special Operations Command, Pacific. Rear Admiral Williams passes the colors to Command Sergeant Major Zukowski. The passing of the colors from the incoming commander to the Command Sergeant Major is his first act in command and verifies his confidence that the non-commissioned officer corps will continue to dress on the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, United States Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral John Aquilino. Okay, good morning and aloha. All right, so uh, could we find a better venue? Uh, you talk about time-honored traditions. To stand on board this great warship, the location of the instrument of surrender, with two of our finest warriors uh, immediately following the 25th ID team. If you're not pumped up, something's wrong with you today. That was incredible. How about a round of applause for the 25th ID team? Well, it. Uh, Changes of commanders are always bittersweet. Before I get into my comments, though, I do have to thank and welcome a few people. Uh, first, Josh, thanks for asking me to speak. I'm honored. JW, welcome to the team. It's always good to see my buddy Rich uh, every time. Uh, additionally, for those who are unaware, General LaCamera, the U.S. Forces Korea, is in the front row. So when you talk about a group of teammates, uh, they're all sitting in a room here. Paulie, great to have you out here today. We miss your wife. Wish she could have come. To the rest of the team here, to the Rudd family, first of all, Ansley, thanks for all your 
dedicated support. For those who are unaware, in a small ceremony in advance of this, we presented uh, Ansley, General Clark presented Ansley uh, with an award for dedicated civ civilian leadership and her role as the commander's wife in taking care of all of the special operations service members and their families. Please, a round of applause for Ansley. And for Josh, again, uh, as humble as he is, we presented him with the Defense Superior Service Medal. Uh, and again, in a ceremony separate from this, but a small token of our appreciation for his dedicated hard work. Please, a round of applause for General Rudd. Okay, there's many of the Rudd family that are with us today on VTC that I would be remiss if I didn't recognize. So uh, Josh and Ann's daughters, uh, Hayden and Hollis are with us via camera. They're online from North Carolina and from Texas. Additionally, Josh's mom, Christine, is on. Josh's brother, Jason. Josh's in-laws, George and Martha Denka. So please, uh, a round of applause for the family members who couldn't make it but are here to witness this ceremony. JW's family's here, Stephanie, Sophie, and Sarah, Scarlett, sorry about that. Welcome to the three, welcome to Hawaii. It's great to have you on the team and out here. Uh, we've been waiting a while and we look forward to having you on the team. So fellow flag officers, community leaders, I see the diplomatic corps here with us today. Uh, for the Special Operations Command service members, families, civilian warriors, guests, family and friends, thanks for coming to witness this event. It's been a while. We're in a post-COVID world. We're all here today. Boy, that's a good thing. Thank you for participating. And it is truly my honor to speak today Josh, JW, thanks for asking me too. So after nearly two years of a pandemic, a lot of discussion, a lot of worry, a lot of concern. Special Operations Command did not stop. There is no pandemic impact to the work that Josh and the company and the team put together to execute integrated deterrence across the region and to deliver SOC PAC missions. We can say it was uncertain time and all the concerns with COVID, but the message is nothing stopped. As a matter of fact, as a part of the, the initial comments, we won't be able to talk about most of the things you do. So I will frame it very generally for the team. Josh, you took the command and you refocused on this Pacific problem and you threw the rudder over based on what was needed to deliver the def national defense strategy effects in record time. Really, really impressive. So after 20 years of everybody being comfortable with what's going on in the desert, you took the helm and you drove the force to execute with regard to what was needed to deliver the secretary and my vision. The strategic priorities changed. That is no small feat to change and move an organization to deliver what is needed. Oh, by the way, it's not just deterrence against one of our potential competitors in the form of the PRC. Nobody ever talks about the other three. Since the Ukraine invasion, we now talk about what Russia means in this theater. We certainly talk about violent extremists and all the work that's getting executed in the southern Philippines, Indonesia, and other countries that were concerned about foreign fighters, terrorism, and, concern, and activities against our allies and partners. And then to General LeCamera's attendance, the North Korean problem set. So we talk about half the globe, we talk about two-thirds of the global economy, we talk about the growing uh, concern and where all the people live, but let's talk about four of the five national security identified threats in that same region. Josh, the mission has been expansive, it's been difficult, and you've performed, you and your team 
have performed flawlessly. Synchronizing interagency, DOD, partner nations, developing and building the counterterrorism information facility, JTFIP in, the, in Singapore, the work in the southern Philippines for advise and assist. The list is long and it is distinguished. There's no better partner in the Indo-Pacific than Josh Rudd. And I started with talking about <clears throat> this being in the form of bittersweet. So for Josh, this is bitter and sweet, mostly bitter. He's given up command of the greatest TSOC and, and special operations component on the globe. That's what's bitter. For me, it's sweet, sweet. Because Josh is leaving SOC PAC and he's becoming the chief of staff in Indo-Pacific Command. And if you didn't think there was a plan out here to keep the expertise against these adversaries on this island to drive and deliver war fighting outcomes, then you're naive. So Josh, I'm sorry about the bitter. I'm also sorry about the sweet. But, but thanks for staying on the team. Uh, you will continue to make this team better just have you just so just as you've done in sock back so thank you very very much for jw no better so no better selection as a replacement for josh the continued teamwork the focus on this mission executing those mission against those four competitors and delivering combat effects when needed from any domain undersea, on the sea, above the sea, with support of space and cyberspace. There's no better team that can deliver those effects. Now, this is also sweet, sweet for JW and his family. Sweet because he just left DC. <laughs> and sweet because he's taken command again of the greatest special operations team on the planet. So, JW, thanks for taking the mission. Thanks for moving the family out and becoming part of the team. Uh, we look forward to you to take, to take every uh, advantage, benefit, and work that Josh has done and continue to move it forward. So, again, thank you both for taking on the hardest mission that we've seen in decades, for putting your all into it, to your families, and the SOC PAC team for taking these missions on and performing uh, like none other. And thank you very much for everything you do for our nation each and every day. Service members of SOC PAC, family members of SOC PAC, civilian warriors of SOC PAC, and to Josh and JW uh, individually, thank you very much for all you do for the team. I appreciate it, thanks. Thank you, Admiral Aquilino. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, United States Special Operations Command, General Richard Clark. Hey, I'll, I'll try to be brief and also not repeat anything that Admiral Aquilino said, but uh, first, uh, General Camera, uh, great to see my old my, my old Ranger buddy. Uh, we've replaced each other many times in the past. Good to, good to see you here from Korea. Uh, and uh, Admiral Aquilino, uh, it means a ton that you and Laura are here, that you spoke. But for the audience, I'm also making sure that I take the opportunity to show how important SOC PAC is to providing options to Indo uh, PACOM each and every day. And the fact that you have two four stars up here, or a two star level change of command to show how important it is. And what SOCOM tries to do every single day is to ensure that options are provided and capabilities are provided for this priority, this number one priority theater uh, for, for, our, for our country. Oh, that wind's kicking. Um, a few things. 
When Josh Rudd came into command two years ago, right on this very deck, there were about 10 people in the audience. And Admiral Davidson and I were both here. Uh, and as, as, we, as we were sitting on, this, uh, sitting on this stage, right behind us steamed a, Navy, steamed a Navy destroyer. But that Navy destroyer was from the Japanese Army. And standing on deck, in full dress uniform whites, and it wasn't staged, it just happened to be part of RIMPAC, they were all staged and they were saluting. And as I reflect on that as a leader of the, in, in this military, that they would pay homage to the United States uh, as they came into our harbor, and that even over 75 years of war uh, had passed, that a country that that we defeated that would then come back that we built back up and showed what democracy is it speaks to the partnership and it speaks to the type of partnerships that we enable throughout this great indo-pacific region and what josh rudd has done in this role of building those partnerships from a first rate uh, they were, and he has traveled. He has traveled this region, and he has built them. And as we held uh, a an in, as we held an, an international conference at SOCOM last month, and Josh brought in over 20 different regional partners to that conference of over 80 that showed up. Josh showed those power of partnerships as he built them. And at the same time, as I told him when he came into command. You are our number one special operations command. And I will ensure that you are provided the assets to provide at that time to Admiral Davidson and now to Admiral Aquilino each and every day. And I hope to Admiral Aquilino, my friend, that we, just, that we showed that. And we showed what competition is. And Josh led that team and he led it extremely well. So Josh, thanks to your leadership. Uh, thanks to what you and Ansley have provided. Thanks for spending a few, at least another year on the island, if not more, separated from Hayden and Hollis and the rest of your family. Uh, and to the Williams family, welcome. We picked the best, and we send the best into Indopaycom. And JW just leaving the, the, that five-sided building in the Pentagon, working as the, as the Deputy Director for Special Operations. Uh, is the right guy to come in here and implement uh, the Indo-Pacific strategy. So, JW, welcome. You're gonna you're gonna crush it as a proven combat leader and warrior. And Stephanie, Scarlett, uh, and Sophie, thanks you know, for accompanying your dad on yet another uh, military move. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Command Master Chief Dave Isom, who just left Sockpack and Walt Zabzikowski, who just came in, because it is our non-commissioned officers that these two represent that are the United States' and our joint forces' inherent advantage, because they are the best you know, that, that our country has to offer. So to all our non-commissioned officers that are here today, and to all of SOCPAC, thanks to what you do, for our great country, for Special Operations Command, and for, for the Indo-Pacific Command. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you, General Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Joshua Rudd. Admiral and Mrs. Aquilino, General and Mrs. Clark, who I know Suzanne is watching remotely and would have been here if she could have been, to our other distinguished general flag officers in the crowd, General LaCamera, thanks for being here. General Bramlett, I see you hiding back there with Nora. Thank you for honoring us with your presence. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge we have a number of Gold Star family members in the crowd as well. You honor us with your presence. Thanks for being here. Aloha and welcome. 
A wise man once said, in moments like this, be brief, be brilliant, be gone. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. The best execution of that guidance I've ever witnessed was in the summer of 2018, when then Major General Carrilla handed off the 82nd Airborne Division to Major General Mingus, and his remarks were 17 seconds long. I'm sorry to say I will not exceed that standard, and I hope the fact that we don't have a thousand plus paratroopers standing in the heat at parade rest, you'll allow me and indulge me just to say a few words that will probably exceed 17 seconds. My first interaction with Special Operations Command Pacific was over a virtual all hands forum where a lot of questions were being asked in the chat room and we had a conversation and a dialogue. And one of the questions that was asked to me as the incoming commander was, what guides you? What, 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 what kind of shapes the way you lead and command? And I responded with what I like to refer to as the four F's. And I call them my core values. It's fitness, it's family, it's faith, and then it's fun. And I'll kind of build off that if you'll allow me. While those will not change for me personally, I think a modification to reflect on the last two years at SOCPAC is appropriate. And so I'll go with four more Fs. But one of those is the same. The first one is family. There's a lot of folks watching from afar on both sides for both the Williams and, and myself that are family. Now you have your given families. My parents, my mom, my brother Jason, my in-laws George and Martha Denka, my daughters Hayden and Hollis, and yes JT, I know you're out there with them. And of course, I've got Ansley, the rock of this family, given family. Although she's not a given, she was a choice, and really she chose me. I don't know why, but I'm eternally grateful. And I just want to say thanks. The other part of the family equation is your chosen family, as we like to say. And these aren't your blood relatives. These are friends who become family. And we have a number of those both here present today and watching virtually. And I just want to say thanks for your support, principally to Ansley and the girls that allows me to do what I have done for almost 30 years now and, can, and to continue to serve. And I absolutely recognize no leader can do it without that foundation, and the men and women of SOCPAC can't do it either. The second F is friends. And in this context, I'll talk about some of the allies and partners. We can't do what we need to do in this theater to achieve integrated deterrence and to be prepared to fight and win without our friends. We have a number of our allies and partners, both here present and watching. Australia, UK, Japan, South Korea, just to name a few, and others virtually. We are grateful for your friendship, for your partnership. We know that our decisive advantage in deterrence is about our friendships and the fact that we don't fight alone and the fact that we work every day together. And as General Clark highlighted, regardless of our history, our allies and partners are what give us a decisive advantage in the Indo-Pacific and across the globe. The third F is the force. This ceremony was deliberately planned to demonstrate the joint, integrated, soft, general purpose force between Mar 4 Pac Band, a joint side boy formation, a joint color guard, the Army's ha, ha team, and the numerous special operators from SOC PAC to put this formation and this ceremony together is indicative of how we fight and win. I'm also grateful for the teamwork, mentorship, coaching, guidance, assistance, and support from my fellow component commanders and our, and our combined forces and partners across the Indo-Pacific. The Special Operations Force of the Pacific is a small, dispersed, persistent, 
formation that operates in all domains, in as many places as we can, and in all directions, to provide dilemmas, to, to provide reassurance to our allies and partners, and to provide options to the commander of Indo-Pacific. SOC PAC Force, you are the professionals who deliver creative options for the joint force and as our nation's most credible partner in competition, in crisis, and in conflict. And finally, the fourth F, future. Admiral Aquilino, I am humbled, excited, and motivated to stay in this part of the world, focused on this part of the, on the, on the nation's most challenging problem set, in the most consequential theater in the world. I'm truly humbled, and uh, yes, bitter, bitter. And finally, the future, the future of SOC PAC. J.W., Stephanie, Sophia, Scarlett, Team Williams. You are part of the force. You are longtime friends, and you are chosen family. And now you're the future of SOC PAC. I've had the great fortune to serve alongside JW, and by extension, our families have become family. And I can tell you, we've shared a lot of unique experiences together. We've always had each other's back. We red teamed each other's missions. And in some cases, I shirked a bunch of work off to him and gave him half of my battle space. All that to say, there is no better joint combat leader to take the helm to carry the guide on of Special Operations Command Pacific. Sir Admiral Aquilino, General Clark, transition's complete. The colors of SOC PAC are in the most capable hands now. He will accelerate. He will think and act and operate differently. And we will, through his leadership, achieve our objectives of the campaign. And finally, to the guardians of the Pacific, the men and women of Special Operations Command Pacific, I leave you two parting thoughts. Keep doing what you're doing, but do it better and do it faster every day. And then finally, Honor our history and continue the, continue the legacy. Mahalo. Thank you, Major General Rudd. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, Special Operations Command Pacific, Rear Admiral Jeremy Williams. Aloha. I, uh, I like the 17 seconds, but I feel there's a little bit of respect, uh, so uh, I'll be brief. Uh, Admiral Aquilino, Ms. Aquilino, General LaCamera, General Clark, other uh, flag and general officers, distinguished guests, family and friends, uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, definitely honored by your presence, especially for those who trekked a long way. Uh, keeping the main thing, the main thing right up front, the Ohana. Uh, to my wife, Stephanie, my daughters, Sophia and Scarlett, Thank you for deciding to come along for another adventure. Uh, you are the reason that keeps me in the fight. You are my center of gravity. I love you. No one cares more about the families than Ansley Rudd. No one cares more about the mission and the troops than General Rudd. We are absolutely honored and fortunate that our very, very dear friends uh, we were able to do transition with. They have absolutely taken care of us uh, in this process. Uh, we are awed by your leadership, uh, by what you've done here, uh, by the welcoming that we've had uh, coming on board. And I realize that's not a, a sole source effort. So for your swim buddy, uh, my buds classmate, Fleet Master Chief Isom, 
and uh, and all the things that you and your family have done here. Thank you for welcoming us and CSM Walt Zakowski, uh, Angel, and Isabel into the into the family and into the formation. Admiral Aquilino, General Clark, thank you. I appreciate the, the vote of confidence. I appreciate the opportunity to lead again. Uh, General LaCamera, I've spent more time downrange in combat zone with you than any other flag or general officer. Thank you for the investment. CSM and I understand the gravity of this mission. We understand the honor and the trust that you've placed in us. We understand the strategic risk that comes along with this, and uh, we will not let you down. To all the dear friends that are here uh, and across the miles that couldn't be with us here today, especially family, uh, to include our American and international partners, uh, specifically in the audience, Mark and Ann Schaefer, uh, Tony and Sue Manganella, Tony Turner, Russ and Julie Angold, Joe Ryan, it's been a minute. Jennifer Short and countless others. I see uh, Jeff Campbell snuck in back there. We are so grateful for you helping us along the way to get us here. To the men and women of Special Operations Command Pacific, absolutely honored to be your teammate with CSM Zakowski and to lead this formation. After the time and investment you've put into me the last several weeks and the last several months of VTCs uh, for onboarding Team Williams, it's absolutely motivating and inspiring to see the level of the command. Again, uh, I can only attribute that to your, to your leadership and your dedication to the mission. So we will continue that eternal optimism, tempered enthusiasm with balance. Finally. Uh, my Ohana is absolutely privileged and honored to be a guest of these islands. So to the people of the land, we will be good stewards and we will be protectors in our time here. Uh, to close, I wanted to search for a uh, strong Hawaiian warrior saying. I don't think I can outdo the 25th and uh, I think I probably need to earn that. So maybe, boss, uh, in terms of what the Special Operations Command Center of Gravity is, is diversity. So from Sean Berg and I's time uh, out at Sakir working for Admiral Storitas and Admiral McRaven, maybe an African proverb more appropriate. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We'll go together. Mahalo. Thank you, Rear Admiral Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the departure of the official party. Indo-Pacific Command, departing. Special Operations Command, departing. Major General, United States Army, departing. Special Operations Command Pacific, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Admiral Aquilino 
and General Clark, I extend their sincere appreciation for your attendance. Thank you very much for your participation. This concludes today's ceremony.